I'm all in so. I can't have room in here. Hey babe, do me a favor. I forgot to post on Facebook that I'm live. Can you do that for me? I don't even know if you're watching this. Give me a thumbs up if you're watching this. You can tell me that. Or tell me you did it. I forgot to post it. You hear me, old lady? Old lady, you hear me? What's going on, fellas? What's going on, RJ? How you doing, buddy? Fishing with Tate. What's going on, buddy? Happy Easter. Bradley, Scott, Simon, Chris. What's up, Joe? How you doing, buddy? Will, what's up, man? What's going on, Richie? How you doing, buddy? Happy Easter. What's going on, Scott, Josh? Happy Easter, Joe. Barrett the Great, Ron, Bradley, Simon, Jay Beats, Sean. What's going on, dude? How you liking the new boat? Dude, I'm loving it, man. I've only been out on it uh, once so far, but I love it, dude. For sure. What's going on, Bill? How you doing, buddy? Happy Easter, man. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, Isaiah? What's going on, Tim? How you doing, buddy? Happy Easter, man. What's up, Raymond, Matt, Andrew, JSK, Wayne, Mike? Hey, I didn't see your comment in here. Did you post this on Facebook? I forgot. Doug, you made it, dude. Glad to see you, buddy. What's going on, man? How's everyone doing? I'm assuming pretty much everyone stayed at home for Easter, right? I know my parents, they, uh, they did a drive-by. They didn't come in, but they dropped a couple baskets off for my boy, so that was kind of cool. And we did a little FaceTime this morning, but that's about it, you know? Going on fishing by numbers. How you doing, man? Defunct. Happy Easter. What's going on, guys? How was your Easter? Anybody doing any fishing? How's the weather? What's going on, Robert? Fishing to the max. What's going on, buddy? How you doing, buddy? Going through fishing withdrawals here in Michigan. Yeah, I heard you guys just got locked down, right? I'm going to take us out fishing on the boat. Uh, possibly next week. If not the week after, for sure. I don't know some of this wind. We've got a bunch of wind coming in, too. I think tomorrow is, what, high 47, blowing like 30. So I'll probably pass on tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, man, it was just like 80 degrees like three days ago. I think it was below freezing the last couple of nights. I'm not sure what's up with that. I guess only in the Midwest, right? Did I get anything for Easter? No. Awesome, just some candy. Paid 70 bucks for an SLX reel. Well, that's a good deal, Scott. Hey, you guys can still use my code over there at uh, Tackle Freaks. If you guys haven't seen that. It, it was, for a while, it was only on that reel just because I bought that reel, did a review on it, and they gave me a code for you guys. But now you can use that code uh, TJ81 over there and get 10% off the entire site, which I don't believe the new site is up yet. But um, hopefully soon... I know the guy that's working on that side is pretty busy with work with everything going on right now. So I don't think he got a chance to put the side up. Or the updated side, I should say. Had friends do a drive-by for my daughter who turned seven yesterday. That's cool. I hear a lot of people doing that. So that's pretty neat, man. 53 people on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, please do so. I really do appreciate that. You deserve many more subscribers than you have. I appreciate that, Andrew, man. I've I've been at it a while, and there's plenty of ways to grow here on YouTube. A lot of it is just doing the, you know, those videos that everyone does. I forget what you even call that. You know, the if I were to do some challenge-type videos and, you know, going to Walmart a lot, things like that. I mean, that kind of stuff is popular for whatever reason. But I'm not into that kind of, that kind of thing, man. I'll just do my own thing, and I'll grow eventually. As long as we're not going down, we're going up each year, so I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Eventually, I will get there, you know. Gotta stay true to yourself, though. Richie, stay at home, not dreading this week's weather forecast. 
or not dreading it. You don't mind the cooler weather? I like it hot, dude. I'll take 100 degrees, man. Oh, you are. You are dreading it. So I'll take 100 degrees all year long. That's cool with me. But yeah, definitely a big change in temperature is what we had last week. It snowed while we were uh, planting onions, no kidding. And I just, we just tilled our garden just the other day. And we were going to plant, and then we seen the forecast for next week, so and we put it off ourselves. Went out today, got a 5.8 pounder today on a Lucky Craft square bill. Red crawl color, then got a 5, five pounder northern. Of, oh, yeah, cool, dude. Very cool, man. A couple five pounders, man. You can't beat that. What's going on, Travis? How you doing, buddy? Happy Easter, man. Yeah, I guess I did. I guess I got a boat for Easter, my birthday, Christmas, for the next, like, 10 years. Just bought a Tattoo 100 based on your review and others. Any suggestion on a good medium fast rod? You like a medium rod? To be honest, you guys know that I use majority, I use some Dobbins rods, but majority Akuma rods. And in the TCS lineup and in the EVX, I don't believe they even have a medium fast. I believe the new SX, which I, I have a couple of them, they have a medium fast. But those are around 180 bucks, So it really depends on what you want to spend. I mean, I'm sure you can probably get the Dobbins entry-level rods. I'm not sure if it's... I think they came out with another one. It was a Fury. I think they have another one they just came out with as well. But, um, I mean, Shimano rods. I mean, again, I don't, I don't use a ton of different ones. But uh, just pick whatever's in your price range. I mean, rods and reels these days, they're all pretty good, you know. What's going on, Jeff? How you doing, buddy? Babe, I didn't see a comment from you on here yet. If you're on here, uh, post this on Facebook. I forgot to post it. Josh, we are in the 80s out here in California. Got out a few hours yesterday morning and caught a few. It was nice to just get out. Been stuck at home with the kid for the last three weeks. Yeah, I'm not getting used to it. I mean, I'm, I'm still going to work. But having the kids here all the time, yeah, I'm not really used to that schedule yet. You know, bad enough in summertime that we got to have them all year. <laughs> no. no, it's nice having some extra time with kids, I guess. But yeah, we had 80s for a couple days. I was out there working in cutoffs and shorts and stuff, and now uh, you know, we got lows in the 30s. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, we uh we seen my first fishing video that I did at the ponds, and not like I caught a ton of fish, but I caught some decent fish, a few keepers. And I just went the other day with my youngest. He wanted to learn how to use a baitcaster. And we did some fishing while we were there, man. We may have caught eight or nine, but you know, most of them were about as big as these swim baits. You know, I don't know what was going on. But, man, all little buck bass. What's going on around fishing, dude? Happy happy Easter, bud. Doug says, lakes are still open, but campgrounds are closed here in Indiana. Plans to go camping on vacation next month, but not sure that will happen. Yeah, man, it's crazy, dude. I know a lot of people that are having to cancel their vacations at the moment. We usually go in, in August, but... Uh, who knows how things will be then, you know? Glad you're not doing... Yeah, Tom, I really think that's my style of videos, man. We'll just keep it with, you know, tackle reviews and catching jokers, things like that. Four inches this morning, no kidding. What's going on, Ed? How you doing, buddy? Debo in the house. Look at that handsome cat. Guys, if you guys have not checked out Debo's Fishing, definitely head over there. Give him a sub. That's my dude right there. Check him out. If you guys like my channel, you'll love his channel. A lot of the similar stuff on there as far as, you know, fishing videos and tackle unboxings, reviews, things like that. He's a good dude. Definitely check him out. And, babe, if you're watching this, link Debo's channel in the description, please. Thank you. Just got snow and still getting some. Yeah, well, there's a chance for us to get snow too, man, but hopefully it uh, it stays away for a bit. Raymond, I'm waiting for SLXDC from across the pond. They said it would be here in May. It costs $149 for the DC. That ain't bad. I think it's about $189 originally. So you're getting a pretty good deal on that. TJ, what's your choice brand of mono line? I tell you what, my uh, for years it was um, Suffolk Siege. And to this day, it's still a fantastic mono line. And then I went to Seaguar Senshi. Um, I liked it because it was a smaller diameter. But it really depended on what you want to do with the mono line. It really wasn't that great because the diameter was that small. I mean, it it handled awesome. 
But again, if you I use mono a lot to, to kind of control the depth of my baits. And with that mono being such a small diameter, it didn't always do what I needed it to do just because the diameter was so small. So if I'm trying to keep a bait extra shallow, I want to put on a, a bigger pound test mono to help me do that. But since their diameter was smaller, um, I started using a suffix Siege again. And again, that's one of the probably the best monos that I've used. I uh, love it. But yeah, Seaguar Senshi is discontinued. Um, but when I found out it was going to be discontinued, I bought like 3,000 yard spools of that line. So I still have plenty of that to use. But if you're looking for a bigger diameter mono line, definitely go with Suffolk Siege. But um, yeah, fantastic line for sure. So here, Bradley got some fishing stuff for Easter. That's cool, dude. Scott says illegal to use my boat right now. It's stuck to the bank and kayak. Yeah, I had a, I had a kayak deal in the works. I'm not sure if it's still going on or not. I know when I talked to him in March, they were still coming off the assembly line. But with all this going down, I'm not really for sure uh, what the deal is with that. I was looking forward to getting a kayak. You know, the ponds that I always fish would be perfect for that over there. But we'll see how that goes down. What's going on, Tim? Happy Easter, bud. 75 people on here. If you guys have not, hit the thumbs up. Please do so. Bill says the Dobbins Colt is the newest entry-level rod they have. Great rod for 80 bucks. There you go. I can't, to be honest, I was thinking Colt, but I wasn't sure where it was in the price range. Appreciate that, Bill. What's going on, Richard? How you doing, buddy? going on Spencer thankfully I go back to work tomorrow working a few days a week for now that's cool dude yeah luckily man I've still been able to work so that's a plus a few of our accounts that we wash for they've cut back a little bit but for the most part I'm still working pretty steady so man Matt how you doing buddy happy Easter TJ hope everyone is doing well and are having a good Easter dinner you know what, man? To be honest, I haven't even had dinner yet. We woke up somewhat late, and they were just kind of lounging around the house. We didn't eat, like, breakfast till like, 1.30. So I told my wife, I'm so full, because we were going to make steaks tonight. I said, I'm so full, I don't even want to eat dinner. So as of right now, I've only had lunch. Not sure if we'll even eat dinner. I guess we'll save that for tomorrow. Appreciate it, though, bud. What's going on, Dickie? How do you, man? How do you like them sunglasses behind you? Oh, the Wiley X, dude? Love them, man. That, they'll be honest, the only ones that fit me from Wiley X is the Boss Frames. Um, I kind of work with them. It's not a paid type relationship or anything like that. I've just been using and promoting their glasses for many years. They've seen that, so they hook me up with glasses every once in a while. And when I was trying to find another pair, because I'll be honest, I wanted that bluish green tint lens. I was trying to find another pair of frames that fit me, so they were sending me a bunch of different ones to try out. And still, the Boss Frame was the only one um, that fit me, but they just came out with that captivate lens it's that it's that bluish greenish color so they sent me a few pairs of those actually uh there it is right there here's some actually some spare lenses as well yeah it's called the blue mirror but yeah dude same glasses you always see me in but these ones are just same color frame they'll just have a blue lens on them but yeah i love them dude wiley x makes some solid product dude happened to the wall um, nothing, dude. I mean, if you guys can see this floor of the stacker room, I, I I haven't really even took advantage of having all this time home and, and not fishing as much right now. I mean, this place is really a disaster in here. I mean, I'm lucky I can walk in here. <laughs> but I do need to rearrange some things in here. But, uh, nothing happened to the wall, though, dude. Raymond, I've been watching my 14-year-old daughter pray for me. Yep, man. Debo in the house. Go on, Scott. Appreciate two bucks, buddy. You rented in the giveaway. You said the magic words. True to yourself. For sure, buddy. You lose that, man. It's all downhill from there, dude. Thomas, first video I ever watched was when I was getting into bass fishing again. It was your 2015 rod. Real Arsenal. That's cool, man. Yes, sir, Sean, man. We all love Debo. Debo is a good dude. Him and Hank, man. Him and Bass Geek. Check those guys out. What's going on, Sean? How do you, man? All is well, buddy. Hope all is well with you. And there's Debo's channel right there. They've also linked that down in the description for anyone watching once the stream's over. Will says, Debo taught me how to use a bait caster from his videos. Love Debo's fishing. For sure, man. Uh, No problem, Debo. He's in Iowa. Brett, appreciate you, Box Butter, entering the giveaway. Have you done any lure shopping due to, uh, have I ordered anything new? Um, can I see those? I got some Booyah spinnerbaits. 
I got those a couple weeks ago. Um, I got some coming from Accent that I ordered. Uh, other than that, about it, man. I'm not doing a ton of fishing right now. My wife's got asthma. My youngest has asthma. And even though we can fish right now, I just kind of feel kind of bad if I were to be out. You know, once you're at the boat ramps, you're always talking to somebody or you're stopping for fuel or food or whatever. And, you know, I feel bad if I brought something home to them. So I'm not really going as much as I could be going. I'm just trying to, you know, just like everyone else, just stay clean, you know. So I'm not doing really a ton of fishing right now. I do really need to buy really hardly anything. Richard, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're entering the giveaway. Yours and Debo's unboxing makes me lose money. Aaron Wetzel, what's going on, buddy? I have four rods in each lineup of the Dobbins Fury. Akuma TCS, price range are very close, but I'm liking the TCS a little more. I'm telling you guys, man, it's a good ride, dude. But me Dobbins makes a, a great ride as well. The sleet and ice heading your way from Nebraska. No kidding, man. All right, Bradley, appreciate it, buddy. Michael Johnson, appreciate the five bucks, buddy. Went to the giveaway. Isolation is costing me a fortune in fishing tackle. I am going to be the most organized and well set up that I've ever been. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. I should use this time as well to do the same. It's like just with the weather, I, just, I can't get motivated to do anything, man. I'm telling you. It's hard to even pump out videos. I need, like, I need the sun to like, you know, I, I didn't get depressed without the sun. Put it that way. And I think the sun's been out like three times this year. I was putting in many hours at your house. That's cool, dude. My wife's working from home as well. Happy, happy Easter, Timothy. Appreciate it, buddy. Is there a different, big difference between tungsten and lead weights other than the physical size? I mean, tungsten's more dense. It's more sensitive. So you're going to have better feel with tungsten um, versus the lead. Definitely more expensive as well. Sean, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're in the giveaway, getting cabin fever in downtown Chi Town. I feel you, dude. I feel you, man. Are your ramps still open? They shut down all the public ones, even the private ramps that I pay 85 a year to use are closed. Closest lake to put in a boat is in two hours now. Uh, let's see here. The, the two main lakes that I fish are not state owned, and they are open. Uh, one of them, one of them was the lake that I was at when I did the boat tour and I broke the motor in. Um, another lake that I fish, well, I'll put it this way. I've only fished it a few times and uh, I do believe the main marina on the south end is closed, but I believe it's open on the north end. And uh, other than that, guys, I really don't fish many other lakes, but I mean, stained or state owned lakes are supposed to be shut down. But um, like I said, the ones that I fish the most are not, so. What's going on, Roberto? How you doing, buddy? High Tackle Junkie. Easter, send me some lures, please. Mooney Cap's going on. Appreciate the buck. You're interested in the giveaway. How you been? What should I get from Strike King? Get some Rage Crawls, man. The Menace, some of my favorites. Happy Easter to you, too. Ed, appreciate you bucks, buddy. Entered in the giveaway. Got 105 people on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do so. Do you appreciate the donations? Uh, tonight's giveaway, we do have the Exoswim 4-inch. Color is in uh, Electric Shad. Big shout out to Carl's as well. If you guys, I think this goes for you guys too. If, even if you're not a member of Carl's, I want to say, if you're not a member, Biospawn's like, it could be around $350 a pack. But if you are a member, and guys, if, even if you don't want to join for the year. Do the free 30-day trial. Check it out. See if you like it. Again, it's free. Check it out. Free 30-day trial. But if you are a member and you would be trying out the trial, Biospawn is $245 a pack. $245. That's the cheapest that I've ever seen it. I mean, you get two packs for less than the price of one. So $245 a pack for Biospawn. But anyways, the giveaway tonight, we got the Exoswim. We got the Vile Bug. Did that in white for you guys in case you're bed fishing. We do have some structure bugs as well from uh, Striking California Crawl. We got some shroom heads. We got some rapid fishing solution line guides, both sizes there. I got videos on these. You guys haven't seen those. Check them out. And then we have here, Mad Matt sent some lures in for the donations as well. And I believe the uh, shipping got a hold of this one, kind of smashed the package up. 
But this is the Live Target Hollow Body Crawl. So one of those as well. Listen, if you guys donate, you are entered in the giveaway. Again, I'm not asking for donations. You guys, if you do it on your own, you're entered in the giveaway. Greetings from South Africa. What's going on, Brian? How you doing, buddy? Team Jesus, happy, happy Easter, man. Glad to have you. Fishing by numbers. Do you have any recommendations videos on attractants? I was using a cheap brand last season and not sure it really made a difference. I mean, I'm a big believer in scent. I use gulp, I use chompers, um, bang, um, JJ's magic, JJ's uh What's the other one? JJ's Magic, Mega Strike. I mean, I use a bunch of different scents. And it was, you know, I fish muddy water, stained water most of the time. And there was this one time, and I've told the story before, I was I was throwing a swim jig. And I like rattles on my swim jigs, and I soak the skirt in, in scent. I mean, I had the skirt just dripping in scent. And going down the stretch of bank, and I was catching fish after fish. And when the bite would stop, It'd be one of two things. Either a rattle fell off or the scent was about gone on the skirt. So once one of them was messed up, I'd put another rattle on or I'd put fresh scent on there and I'd start catching fish again. So I'm a huge believer in scent and noise. So again, always got to have the rattles and scent no matter really what I'm fishing. If I'm fishing hard baits, a lot of times I put on there uh, the fish sticks. But yeah, big believer in scent. I believe it makes a difference. And even if it really don't, it's more of a confidence thing for me. Just because I know the visibility in the lakes that I fish are not that great. So I'm a big believer in sound and scent. So really, if it, if it actually works, I don't know. But it makes me fish better. So I use it, you know. Happy Easter, Matt. Thanks for answering all my questions on Instagram. Have a great Easter. God bless. No problem, buddy. You guys can hit me up. I mean, people hit me up all the time on Instagram, Facebook. I enjoy talking with you guys. If you have questions, feel free to hit me up. I am catching dinks probably smaller than Debo lately. No kidding. I tell you what, wait till you see the video I got coming out probably next week. I think I got you both beat because majority of the fish I caught were smaller than the baits I was using. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. Our high tomorrow is supposed to be 48. Glad it's only going to be one day. I don't think it gets much higher than that, though, the next few days. But I know it's windy as heck tomorrow, man. Blowing like 30, I thought. What's going on, Dad? You figure out how to make a comment? Hello again from Indiana. Happy Easter. Appreciate it, man. What's going on, Doug? Appreciate five bucks, buddy. You're in the giveaway. Simon, I'm sure I'm behind on comments, man. I'm sure you guys just seen uh, the giveaway. Reggie, use your code for Mystery Tackle Box Elite First Box. Arriving Tuesday, we'll let you know how it goes. That's cool, man. Yeah, I've never got the Elite Box. I've always gotten the, the regular or the Pro Box. So you let me know how you like that elite box. Happy Easter, Russ. Yeah, man, cut our worms. Dude, that's one of my favorites. Yep. Love the cut our worm. I just picked them up in uh, Tequila Sunrise. Love that color. The wind's kicking your butt. Yep. James, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're into the giveaway. Stay safe. Stay home. Take care of your family. Yes, sir. I bought the plasma tails on Carl's recently for one fifty. No kidding, I've never seen it for buck fifty. You got that, dude? That's the yeah. now that would be the best deal I've ever seen. Two forty five. I thought was it one fifty. It's hard to beat that one. What's going on, Kelly? Happy Easter. What am I doing for Easter? I'm I'm talking with you guys. Matt, Matt, appreciate you, bucks, buddy. You rented in the giveaway. Trying to win your stuff back, man. I live in northern Indiana. Most of the ponds that I fish are either stained or dirty. Some of them are clear. I've got out since the weather's been nice and cannot seem to catch anything, any vice. Um, yeah, this time of year, man, you know, I mean, it's really no matter where you're at, it's going to be pretty stained to be muddy with all the spring rains and all that. But I've always had the best luck this time of year with a spinnerbait. But get something with, uh, I'm going to try these out. Now, to be honest, you know, probably most of the spinnerbaits I have, or double willow, and I fish lakes that have shad in them. I've always done the best with a willow blade over like the Colorado blade that they recommend for more thump and dirtier water. They can feel the bait better, but again, just I've just done better with uh, willow blades on the lakes that I fish. But I did pick up some of these to try. 
from Booyah. Got those uh, Colorado blades on there, that orange kicker. I've heard these work really well, you know, in the muddy water as well. So we're going to give those a shot. That might be something you want to check out. But yeah, I definitely do. I'd hit them with a spinner bait or a chatter bait. RJ, I appreciate two bucks, buddy, into the giveaway. 121 people on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do that. Really do appreciate that. The digital chip and reels. I tell you what, Darren, uh, babe, if you're watching this video, link the Corrado DC review down below. And Darren, just watch that video, man. And uh, if you like to skip and you can't, you'll probably get a DC reel after you watch that video. But yeah, just a different type of braking system. Gives you a lot of control. You need it back, Matt. BT in the house, man, from down south. Happy Easter to all. Still locked down. No fishing or golf. It'll pass, dude. Sloan Factor. What's going on, buddy? How you doing, man? Comparison video between new boat versus old boat. Uh, that could be a good video. We could do that. Maybe I could also get them side by side because my dad has the same boat that I had, the tracker. So maybe I'd get his boat, the new boat, and we can kind of do a comparison side by side. Give you guys, you know, like a size comparison and all that. That could be a fun video. RJ, anyone in here have some staple Florida pond fishing advice? Have a good idea of it, but love to learn things I don't know. And I know a few of you in here killed out in Florida. Dude, I thought like all the info I give you, man. I always get your text on Messenger. I thought I'd give you the answers and you catch fish. Is that still working for you? Why did you go talons on your boat instead of power poles? Brian, the main reason was uh, there's just no room back there. If you're going to go 24 volt system on that boat, it's pretty tight back there. So we went with um, we went with the talons because they don't require the pumps. So everything's internal. But now that I've had the talons on the boat, I mean, I think I already like them more than I like the power poles. And I'm not partnered with Minn Kota or nothing like that. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, I'm definitely digging the talents for sure. What are you using for a jig storage box this year? Right now, everything's just tossed in a plate of waterproof box, but I'll be getting one of those um, edge, um, it might be called jig, bladed jig boxes here real soon. My majority of my tackle will be moved over to the edge boxes here, like I said, real soon. I missed a huge bass last Monday. Woody inserted a punch of... <laughs> that sucks, dude. Can't catch them all, though, man. Man, Matt's going to get snow tonight. I still find that crazy, dude. You're like three hours from me and all the, the weather you get. I think they're calling for snow here, too. But it's just crazy. You're only a few hours away and you get all that bad weather. Did you get any of that hail that we got last couple of weeks? The slapjack blade bait I got in the MTV really is attractive to them in my stain pressured lake. So I'm not catching the pantries there. Slapjack blade bait. I don't think I've seen that one. Sounds cool though. No problem, Adam. I tried the 4.5 plasma tail as a trail and trader bait for the first time and caught my PB yesterday. I've been telling you guys, man, the old plasma tail on the charity bait is the deal. That's awesome, Devin. Nathan, appreciate the five bucks, buddy. You're entering the giveaway. I just ordered from Carl's for the first time today. Thunder Cricket or Jackhammer? Why? I have not used the uh, Thunder Cricket yet. And uh, I mean, Jackhammer, I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons why you'd want to pick that one. And uh, to be honest, my favorite is still the Shock Blades. I haven't done as well on the Jackhammer compared to the Shock Blades, but I'm still going to keep, you know, plugging away with those this year and figure out really why one works over the other. I mean, I know just seeing different videos online. I mean, some have tungsten heads, some don't. I mean, just different sound. Um, blades are made out of different material, things like that. So there's, I guess, sound differences from one to the other. Jackhammer is built really well. I mean, nice beefy hook on there. Uh, could be a hand tight skirt on there as well. I mean, I said it's built really well. It's pretty expensive as well. But I do believe Carl was sold out of, uh, of all those, both sizes as well. Three eighths and half in the Jackhammers. But again, I haven't used the Thunder Cricket yet. There is a crowd of DC review right there. Slump fact just ordered the Shimano Bantam MGL from Japan. No kidding, dude. I bet you like that one, dude. I'm going to say Thunder Cricket all the way. And Matt, why say that, dude? I haven't used the Thunder Cricket yet. What's your reason behind it, though, man? I'm still going to try it. All Tim told me to try putting braid on the, um, on the jackhammer. I'm going to try that this year and see how it works for me. 
But as of right now, I'm still going with shock blades. Any tips on first time boat buyer looking to buy my first boat? You know, mainly if you're buying a used boat, I mean, I would inspect the boat, obviously look at the hull, check for cracks, welds, things like that. Um, start the motor up first. I mean, definitely, definitely really inspect the boat well before you, before you purchase it. I mean, if you're buying a new boat, um, again, just, if you're buying for your first boat, you're not really going to know what you need and want until you've actually fished out of it. But uh, as far as motor goes, I mean, check your regulations and all that on all the lakes that you're going to fish. A lot of guys still can't get it in their head why I have a 50 horsepower on this boat out here. Um, it's not that difficult. I mean, the main lake that I fish, I can only have a 50 horse max. And some guys, just, they just can't comprehend that. But, um, yeah, so just I would check the lakes that you're going to fish, see what the um, – if you have any horsepower restrictions – you know, on your lakes, that would be a big deal there because if you want a certain size boat, you may not want to put that small motor on that boat. So that is something to consider as well. But um, something to think about. BT all good, doing a lot of yard work, paint and trim reel. There you go, dude. Got to stay busy, man. RJ, yeah, that's cool, dude. Glad those tips are still working for you. Kind of, it gives me a challenge too, you know, to see if my advice really does work. So it's cool when I give you a, a bait to try and it does work. That is pretty neat. What is your favorite top water frog walking bait and like buzz bait? What's your favorite top water frog? Favorite top water frog? Um, hollow belly, probably a spro. And like a one I would reel, like, you know, like a, like a strike king or a ribbit frog. It'd be the rage toad. Um, walking bait. Probably, probably a gunfish, but I also like the Mega Bass Pop Max, which is a popper, but it walks really well as well. Buzzbait, probably Dinner Bell from Picasso or the Cavatron from Mega Strike. I heard you have to make sure you keep the spikes on the talons clean or they start to stick. And not retract. I can I can see that, yeah. That's probably something I'll need to keep an eye on with all the you know the mud and clay and everything I'm fishing. Brandon got some nice 3.5, 4.5 large yesterday here in Oklahoma. They were packed full of eggs, ready to go, man. That's cool, dude. It won't be long here too, man. It's a great looking boat. Love the color. It matches my Chevy Silverado LTZ. That's cool, man. Appreciate it, BT. Get the Project Z Chatterbait. It's basically as good as the Jackhammer. I will say, Brandon, I was using the Project Zs before I started using the shock blades, and I thought uh, yeah, they actually vibrated harder, in my opinion, compared to the Jackhammers. I just, I just was not having the luck on the Jackhammer that most people are having. Yeah, I got that hailstorm a few weeks back. Didn't cause damage, but it came down pretty good. Peace size. Yeah, we got much bigger than P-Size here. Blue Boy, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're entering the giveaway. Man got hit with a foot of snow two days ago. Most of it melted today, but unfortunately, it cooled the water down. 132 people still on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do so. Really do appreciate that. Marlon Bates tried to do a chatterbait, and it was fail. But his concept was good. Upstate in the house. Come on, dude. How you been, buddy? Fighting that wind. You need to let Carl's know what bait you are going to talk about so they can stock up because they sell out everything you talk about. <laughs> yeah, I have noticed that. I have noticed that. I think one of the last times I put the picture before the that uh, fire crawl chatterbait, as soon as I put that picture up, I checked it the next day. And yeah, they're already gone. So I guess what I need to do is make sure I have everything I need before I mention it. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, yeah, if you guys are looking for Biospawn, $245 a pack right now over there at Carl's, if you are a member. And like I said, if you're not a member, I believe it's like $350. Would it be too early for a buzz bait, man? If the temps are like approaching 60-ish, I would say you're good to go for a buzz bait. Have your arms going, buddy. Appreciate two bucks. Rented in the giveaway. Happy Easter to you as well. Still hoping you do tear apart the cleaning. I know, man. I feel so bad every time you make that comment. I just I don't have time to do that right now. I swear one of these days, one of these years, I will get that done. I will get it done, man. 
Gonna try the shock blade, sound good. I'm not paying 20 for a chatterbait. I can get for four Project Z's on sale for that. Brandon, if Carl's does get the uh, the jackhammers back in stock, if you are a member there, they're like $12.79. So big savings there if you do want the uh, jackhammers, man, go to Carl's. But last time I looked, I believe every color was sold out. Man, Matt, we have clean water here and the Thunder Cricket doesn't thump as hard as the jackhammer and also the sound of the cricket is really nice, pretty unique, almost like a cricket. No kidding. <laughs> almost like a cricket, huh? Go figure that. Doesn't thump as hard. So more of, I guess, a finesse chatterbait. The softer thump believes gets more bites from me here and comes through grass better than the jackhammer. Okay. That's good to know, Bud. Bud? It's good to know, Bud. What's going on, uh, Johans? How you doing, buddy? What would you suggest for an all-around crankbait rod reel? Thanks a lot. Cranking, you know, if you're going to talk deep cranking, definitely five speed. If you're just talking like square bills, anything from like six to 10 foot, you know, six speed works just fine. Six, three, I even use like a six, 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 eight, something in the six range and a crankbait rod. It really depends on the weight of the lures. You may need a medium, you may need a medium heavy, and you may need certain length, again, depending on the depth that you're trying to reach. But for the most part, for me, a seven foot medium heavy mod fast action is the crank rod that I use. It loads at a quarter, maxes out at one ounce. And that is the Akuma EVX, which is around hundred bucks, I believe. So. Ed hasn't tried the jackhammer, but I've had a lot of luck with the green pumpkin thunder cricket fishing local stain and muddy water. Okay, dude. Sloan factor. I know, dude, it's been a while, man. I know, <laughs> I know, but you know, I know you want the Tatula, but the ones that I have out there, you, you could tear down that reel no problem with uh, with the videos I have out there. The only difference would be the T-Wing -wing, T -wing system. I'll get it, dude. I'll get it. And if I and when I, I will make it one, and when I do make it, I'll shout you out, man. Bass were topping like crazy yesterday in Oklahoma, but I didn't bring any top waters. Tom says, quite a few fish he's been catching lately have been on a quarter ounce straight bait with a Kitec 4 inch Easy Shiner for a trailer. I've also took off this skirt and replaced it with a regular, oh, the sock skirt. I got you. That's cool, dude. Yeah, I see him on Facebook, you're catching a few. That's cool, man. Looks like some organization going on in the background. How's the new boat? Um, it may look like some organizations going around here, but there is like zero. I mean, it's this place really is a disaster. I'm loving the boat. I've only had it out the one time. We haven't even really fished out of it yet. Hopefully this week, though, we'll get out with that. So, seeing one bass literally jump one foot out of the water. No kidding. Jim, appreciate you, Bucks, buddy. You're into the giveaway. Bang the skirt. I got you, Tom. Hopefully next week the weather goes away so I can get the boat out of the shed. I have fresh pair of trailer tires coming in next week. Let's go, dude. Get it ready, man. He doesn't have that battle box or was an ammo box. Always out. Uh, actually, it's right here. Battle box. Got to keep it handy. I believe those are still out of stock over there at Calcoast. No problem, John. Reception greater than reality. Need a reasonable price backpack. Um, I'll tell you what, this one here. Well, I'll tell you what. That one's from Ego. I don't believe it's reasonably priced. It's like $169. But that uh, one that I used last year for PC Fun, I want to say that one's right around 100 bucks. Probably same price range as like the one for Tackle Warehouse. But you may want to check out those couple. Like I said, that one, fantastic bag. But again, it's a little bit pricey. Have you tried throwing the 12 and Jelly Worms? Or in, yeah, years ago, dude. I used to throw those. Um, the Rage Tail Anacondas. Um... Watch some of those want to try them out this summer. Any tips? Never fished them before. You don't need as big a hook. I mean, some people are going to look at like a big 12-inch worm and think they need some giant hook in it. Most of the time, they're going to eat that from the head anyway. So you just need a big enough hook to give you enough gap for that size of worm. You know, but five, six-odd hook on a 10, 12-inch worm is more than enough. You don't need to get some big eight, ten-odd hook, you know, for that long worm. Again, they're going to eat it at the head. But, um, yeah, summertime is great. You know, give them fish a big meal. But, uh, yeah. One of my go-tos was the uh, the uh, Anaconda. Love that worm. Tattoo Elite. Haven't used it yet, bud. It's actually right here. Right there. Still in the box. 
130 people still on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do that. Really do appreciate that. What would you recommend 15 pound fluorocarbon for flipping jigs into, into medium to sparse cover? And if so, would you recommend for the best fluorocarbon? Um, sparse, I'd say sparse is probably what I fish. I mean, it's not really, I definitely wouldn't call it heavy cover. And 15 is about the heaviest that I'll go. I will go 17 from time to time, but 15 is probably 85% of the time I'm going with, um, Going with 15. I mean, when I'm really close to them is when I'll go up and pound test. Not so much for the thick cover. This way I got a little more like, I guess, shock resistance with the heavier pound test. It's because I'm so close to the fish. There's not a lot of line out to help absorb that. So when I'm really close, I'll go up and pound test. But again, I don't really need it for the cover. So again, 15 pound is what I use majority of the time. And Seaguar and Vizx is what I use the most. I'm going to use a Brace X as well. But I probably have some around here. Probably right here, actually. Yeah, there's a Braze X right there, 15 pound, or the Invis X. So I'll go with. And again, like I said, 17 pound. If I'm really close, I'll go 17 pound and Braze X. I've heard some guys say that the Braze X they feel is softer. I feel that uh, the Invis X is a softer fluorocarbon, but um, that's my opinion on that. I mean, I don't really have any issues at all with the Invis X, and a lot of guys have, but I mean, I think it's super soft. I always condition my line, and uh, you know, I think it's got the most stretch about all the fluorocarbons in that lineup. I were trying mini buzz bait. Uh, the ones that I use from, is it in here? Actually, right here. You know what's funny about these two? These are from Picasso. I can't think of the exact name of them, but they're only going out here. They're a little double blade buzzer there. Okay. Only an eighth ounce. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. You would think these blades or whatever would catch some wind. You couldn't launch these. These are an eighth ounce and you can like launch these baits. I mean, it's pretty awesome. But yeah, that's the little ones that I use. I think Booyah used to make one too. They might even been called like little pond buzz baits. I mean, they're real small. You can get them at Walmart. I used to throw those too. And now for my smaller buzz baits, I go with those. Man, Matt's going to try to fish tomorrow. What's your thought on a bait to throw during a cold front high of 38 tomorrow? Dude, I'd probably go with like an underspin or even like a uh, scrounger head, something like that, dude. Something that's got some vibration, but still kind of subtle. Ed started organizing his, his kayak tackle this week to drop weight. Wound up weighing about three pounds more because I found a bunch of soft plastics I forgot about in the closet. There you go. We tried the Grande Bass Airtail Wiggler. I have not. I have not tried that one. What was the ATJ? What do you think about mean green? To be honest, I've never used copolymer. You know, I just figured if I want to stretch, you know, floating line, I'm going to go with mono. I do believe copolymer is kind of like the best of both worlds, you know, as far as fluorocarbon and a mono together. But uh, normally I'm going fluorocarbon, I'm going mono. I've never used copoly. Could not tell you, man. Found a bunch of kicker fish baits. That's cool. Had we flip a 65 pound braid, 25 pound sniper or Berkeley? Gotcha. Yeah, you're also down south, dude. You also got a chance of catching like 10 pounders all the time. We're lucky we pull a three pounder out here. Thanks, Rick. Happy to you too, buddy. I have to agree with you on the Invis X being softer than the Braze X. A lot of people say the opposite, but I'd say definitely Invis X is definitely softer. I need a good color and fishing line that I can see for saltwater fishing. You ever tried the yellow? The buzz saw. Matt, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're into the giveaway. Do you th do you ever use methylate trick worms? I don't use the trick worms. I use the ones from. I don't want to leave the screen here. The from Gene Larue. Uh, what are they called? Uh, uh, tat tail worm. I think they're called tat tail worm. And uh, I use those with methylate, just like you would use a trick worm. Little floating worm. Good time of year to do that. 
Real Snot versus KBD and JJ's versus Spike It. Real Snot, uh, I think they both work good. Real Snot, I'd say it could even penetrate a little bit deeper than the KBD line in Lure. But Real Snot is very oily. And, uh, you know, I've been using KVD line and lure for, gosh, 12, 15 years. Who knows how long? And I've never really had an issue with that. You know, real snot I only used for one season. Still good. It's a little bit too oily for my liking. And as far as JJ's and Spike It goes, JJ's penetrates all the way through the worm, where Spike It's more of just a surface. I mean, they're both great. I've used Spike It for years. So I've been using JJ's for the last, I don't know, six or eight years. Both great scent. But again, I do believe the JJ's does penetrate deeper into plastic. How many lures have you got? I don't know, about 12,000. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I don't want to put that out there. I don't want my wife to know. Do you use line conditioner on all lines? I mean, you can use it on braid. It'll, it'll quiet it down a little bit, but I really don't even spray my braid anymore. I mainly use it for mono and fluorocarbon, but it's something I always do. What would you throw with mono and fluoro? You know, mono is great for top water because of the floating line. So, I mean, you can put uh, a popper on fluorocarbon. You can throw it out. You might get three or four pops out of it before that line starts to sink, and it'll drag the nose down. So, for top water, you really need braid or you need mono. So, I use mono for top water, and I use mono to adjust my depth with my square bills and crankbaits. So, if I have a, let's say, DT10. And I wanted it to go, you know, six or eight foot, I might put on 15 or 17 pound mono. It's a floating line, bigger diameter, and I keep that deeper diver up a little bit shallower. I'll do the same thing with the square bill. You know, if I got a square bill that'll run maybe two or three feet and I want to wake it just below the surface, if you put on 20 pound mono and you keep your rod tip up, you'll get that square bill just barely to wake underneath the surface. So I use the mono to kind of adjust the, adjust the depth of my crankbait. And fluorocarbon, I basically use for everything else. You know, um, it's a sinking line, less stretch, less stretch, more brazen resistant. You know, I use it for all my jigs and Texas rigs and flukes, worms, Carolina rigs. I mean, you name it, I use fluorocarbon pretty much for all of that. I only use braid when I'm around grass. So, you know, when I'm frog fishing or swim jigs and grass, things like that, I use braid. I mainly pitch with fluorocarbon just because, you know, braid and, and wood it's kind of a pain in the butt if, uh, if the braid wraps around a, 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 a stick or a piece of wood, something like that, and you pull on it, it digs into it. You got to go in there and get it where fluorocarbon won't do that. So, you know, I really only use braid around grass, mono really to adjust, adjust my depth on crankbaits, top water, and then I use fluorocarbon for everything else. I noticed here in the UK that braze X is softer in the cold water, but I love it. Okay. Haven't noticed that, but that's cool though. Very, very true. I worm fish with 17 pound and crank with 15. I don't blame you there, dude. You never know when you're gonna catch a giant. Eighth ounce junior buzz saw, buzz bait is awesome. When's tackle trivia coming back? Yeah, I guess we can do that a couple weeks again. That's fun. I gotta come up with some good uh, questions for you guys though. You can try the yellow next time. That'll work. Duck says, use your Fish Monkey Gloves discount code on some face shields. Plan to use them for both work and, of course, fishing. That's cool. And my wife, when she's got to go to the store again, she don't go too often just because she got asthma. But when she heads into Walmart, if I'm at work or something like that, she's got one of my hats on. She's got one of my buffs on, the gloves. I mean, she's all, she looks like she's going fishing. <laughs> That's cool, though. Yeah, I'm digging the KVD mail because I've been using that for years. And the uh, real snot, it still worked well. But I do believe I'll give the edge to the KVD. Tackle junky baits. You know, I do have a few ideas, but I mean, uh, I don't have any time to really build any baits right now or even know how to go about doing that. It's something I might tinker with down the road, but uh, for right now, I'll probably pass on that. Is braid better for what? It depends really what you're doing, man. How is it that every time uh, someone brings up a random bait, you have it in arm's length? It's kind of funny how that works. I don't know, dude. <laughs> is that a jug of Kool-Aid in the back? No, that's um, that's Simple Green. And then the box behind it is one of those um, Who Daddy. What do they call it? Who Daddy? Who Daddy? 
Hornady, what is it called? It's one of the Masonic cleaners. Whenever I get back into doing the real cleaning, which I will, Sloan Factor, I bought that to be able to clean the reels much faster. Instead of letting them soak in the chemical for a while, I'll just run them through there and they'll be good to go. It's one o'clock in the UK. No kidding. You better get to bed. Or is that afternoon or morning? And in regards to fishing reels, who makes a better, the best thumb bar on baitcasters? And have you ever had issues with real baitcasters in the cold in regard to an anti reverse spinning in reverse? I will say I did have one reel. One reel, um, and it was it was a TCS reel that uh, I went out. It was the year before, year before, and it was right after New Year's, freezing cold out there. Actually, that was when Mike Watts, I think, buddy of mine, went in the water to get his bait off the tree. It was during that video that that's the first time that I've ever had a reel do that. Threw it out, and I was jigging a trap, and the spool would spin backwards. And I took it all apart, couldn't find anything wrong with it, and then I used it since then. It works fine. So for whatever reason, that one particular reel um, did do that in the cold. So I don't know if it was just too much grease in there or whatever. I did clean all the grease out of there, oiled it, and I haven't had any issues since then. But um, as far as best thumb bar goes, um, I'm not going to say I, I only, I've only used a few Shimano's. I'm not going to say Shimano. I didn't care for those. Those I didn't care for those that much. I'm going to say probably. Mm, probably Daiwa, you know. I missed the first trivia stream, but I'll be on the next trivia. I know them all. I've been here eight years. My dude. Debo can do the painting for your baits. He's pretty good. I seen that, man. I'll give it to Debo. He can do pretty good. TJ. I don't have Facebook due to my work. I don't do Twitter for the same. I would like to keep in contact with you at the time other than SNL. What's your email? Uh, BT, it should be in the description. Um, babe, you can put it on the screen. I'll just tell you it's james.loduca, L-O-D-U-C-A, at gmail.com. But it should be in the description of all my videos, bud. That'd be great, though. Yeah, I'd love to hear from you. What is the best color for Jewy? Best color for Jewy. I don't, I'm not even sure what that is. Kayak fished all day Wednesday with a friend. Caught the biggest fish of the day. Little 13 5 inch post spawner, but it was the biggest. It's kind of how it was with me and my son. We went out the other day to the ponds and he only he caught he caught a big bluegill. He caught a couple bass, which were decent. I mean, the, one of them could have been a keeper. But I don't think all the ones I caught all day, I mean, half of them weren't as big as this bottle. I mean, they were small. All little buck bass. But I do believe he caught the biggest fish of the day. Scott, update on the shirts. Um, I don't believe I had anybody else contact me on those. I think we're still at like 17 or 18 shirts. If you guys want one, all the info is always in the description of my videos. But again, I'm not putting the order in until we get 25 orders. So if you guys want one, you can let me know all the new colors, sizes, pricing is always in the description of the videos. Just email me or message me in Facebook or Instagram, and I'll put you down for one. And once I reach 25, I'll hit you back for payment. But as of right now, yeah, we're still on hold until we get 25. Good on, BP. How you doing, buddy? Happy Easter. Where we go? Uh, arc rods. I've never used arc rods. Doesn't, um, what's his name? Doesn't Randall Tharp use arc rods? I've never used them though. Uh, Matt, I don't have a sand color shirt. It's just kind of like a khaki color. The, uh, it was, it was sand. It was military green, which I do have one of those. And it was white or the three new colors we added on top of, um, charcoal, black, red, and royal blue. If you had to be another species angler, what species would you fish for? Probably musky. Definitely musky. Tyler, we just got a new tracker boat taken out a couple times. When does the catching when does the catching fish start? <laughs> um, usually, it don't really get too good here till I'm saying. I guess it depends on the weather. 
usually end of April, sometimes middle of April gets pretty good. Um, seems like when, when I always look back at my Instagram, seems like usually first week or two in May is when I start catching them pretty good for my boat. But yeah, it just depends where you're at. Yeah, Thark used the arc rounds. Yeah, I've never used one though. And then she actually says the TJ1 merch is in the description. We've got 133 people still on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do so. I really do appreciate that. If you've been cleaning up your board, uh, I'll back here. I had one of my um, banners up there for the dealership. I just took that one down. There's another one over here. I'm not currently working with them at the moment. Um, with everything going on right now, they've kind of cut everything just because really people are not buying cars. And to be honest, the uh, the GM that originally signed me on, he's no longer with them. So I possibly be working with a different dealership here really soon, just not at the moment. But that's what was there. And I'm just going to hang some more baits and things like that there. The weather still sucks in Illinois. It's cold nights, cold water, slow fishing. I hear that, dude. I hear that, man. Yeah, so we went to the ponds the other night, and I, and I told my my littlest or my youngest, I said, "Man, I said we can't even catch them here. I said we ain't gonna catch them. We ain't gonna catch them on the big lakes." Swindle is using arc rods this year, along with Thart. Oh no, kidding! That's cool. Because he's using what arc rods and loose reels. Hey, we didn't do anything special for Easter, bud. We got up late. We ate a late lunch. Haven't even ate dinner yet. And I'm talking with you, fine people, man. So I guess that would be special for doing at the uh, SNL tonight. Suggestions for an affordable frog rod. I guess that would depend what you would consider affordable. The frog rod I use is the uh, TCS. It's the seven foot heavy mod fast action. It's actually a jig worm rod. I love it for frogs. That one's right around 145. Um, like I said, the Fury series, I'm sure they have a heavy power in there you could get. Probably 734 or something like that, or 704. But I like that TCS rod. Where are we at? Have you tried the new Tatula SV yet? I have not, bud. I got it here. Somewhere. Um, yeah, got it here. Haven't tried it yet, though. There'll be another one that we'll review this year. Oh, yeah, dude, I I don't plan on leaving Ram. I mean, uh, you know what? I didn't even think about that until you said that. Now, I don't know where the new GM's going to. Hopefully, he's going to another Ram dealer. But, um, yeah, I've, I've had a Ram for, I've had this Rebel here. Or the, no, I've had the Rebel for, no, oh, I didn't have that Rebel for eight, ten months. Well, I had this one for a few months. And then my Ram before that, I had for, that was a 2007. So, I had that one for, like, what, 12 years? Before that, I had a Dakota, so I'd like to stick with with uh, Ram just because I've never had any issues with them. But I'm not one of the, one of those guys. I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't really care. I mean, if I I like the looks of the Rams, I've stuck with them and they've treated me well. But I mean, if Chevy comes out with one I really like, or even Ford, what I don't really look into which one's better or whatever. I know that there's always a big debate if you're a Chevy or Ford. I don't care. I just buy what looks cool. And really, what sold me on the new Rams is the interior. So. When did you start fishing? I mean, when I was when I was younger, I fished with my dad, um, but it wasn't bass fishing. It was bluegill and cat fishing. So at a young age, I was always fishing, but I wasn't bass fishing till uh, probably right around twenty years ago. Gyms at car dealerships cycle through like crazy. The whole industry is a revolving door. Worked in it, hated it. No kidding. Aaron, appreciate twenty bucks, buddy. You don't have to do that, man. You're interested in the giveaway. Really do appreciate that, bud. Anyone else is tuning in the giveaway for tonight? Vile Bugs. Again, got a shout out, Carl's. You guys like Biospawn? If you're a member, $245 a pack for Biospawn. Non member, I believe, is like $350. So if you're in the mood for some Biospawn, if you need some Biospawn, now is the time to pick it up. The giveaway tonight, again, Vile Bugs. Exo Swim. We got some Shroom Heads. We got some Structure Bugs. We got the rapid fishing line guides, both sizes, and one of the live target, live target hollow body craw. Like I said earlier, the uh, delivery service really took a toll on that package. 
but it is brand new. Russ, I've got like nothing organized. I've been talking with Plano, to be honest with you guys. I'm talking with Plano, we worked something out. So I'm going to be getting some new boxes. That's one reason that I kind of held off because I, I know I wanted to load the new boat up with all the edge boxes. So I'm kind of waiting on that to get here. But other than that, man, just with this weather and like the sun not even come, coming out in like three months, I get depressed, dude. Like, I don't, I don't, if you'd see this room right now, you wouldn't believe it. It looks kind of clean from your view. It is a disaster, and I, I don't need, I can't even get motivated to come down here just because, you know, with this weather, I just get depressed, dude. And I'm still working, you know, the this virus really hasn't affected my job at all, so I'm still working, the kids are here, so when I'm home, you know, I feel like I should be doing stuff with the kids and all that, so I just have not spent that much time down here like I should have. Uh, I have not used the, the Inception Z yet. I have it, the Sport Z, but I have not used it yet. I haven't even spooled it up. Have you used a loose custom light? I have not. I'm looking to get in lightweight reel for jerkbait. That is one that I would like to try. I got that on the list. I think they came up with a new one this year. Um, from loose, I've tried the custom, custom pro, pro TI, BB1 pro. I got reviews on all those, all fantastic reels. I'm sure the light is just as good, but I have not tried that one yet. Glad to have you back, Bradley. You too, Mooney Cat. Glad dinner was nice. I haven't ate yet. I'm hungry. I'm getting hungry, baby. Better get them steaks going. 130 people still on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do that. Really do appreciate that. BP, I've owned Ram, had the death wobble in the front end. Dealer was not very helpful. Went bad to, sh went bad to Chevy. Just picked up a 2020 Silverado Trail Bros. Now my truck matches my boat. There you go, dude. Got to match the boat. That's why I went with white. You know, I, I, I knew that I was going to get a white boat. That's why when I got the truck, I got white. But it's, like I said, that boat's more of an off-white. It's not, it's not a bright white. So Crestline, if you're watching this, you need to come out with a bright white boat so I can get a true match. I'm going to have to wrap one or the other to get them to match. Ed, you have the, uh, the Plano Edge Boxes. They're the one, you know, I'm sure you've seen them. They're yellow. I hate to say it, but I have enough biospawn yet. Yeah, I got a few too many as well. BT says the new edge boxes are great. Very nice. You'll like them. Yep. I'm looking forward to it, dude. Fishing with Dave. What's going on, buddy? How do you, man? What's going on, Josh? One of those new Booyah spinner baits on the wall behind you. Haven't tried them out yet. I ordered some of these. I ordered some from Accent. Um, what we got here? This one here, these are in three eighths. I think these, I wanted half in these. These are sold out, but uh, three eighths. This is this the Covert series. That one's got the red head. A couple there. Uh, we got a couple in the Willows. A couple there in the Willow. And then a couple more here. And then that's another Willow there. And then. Another one there. So that muddy water, spring rains. Try something different. Where are we at? Best bait for pond fishing? Probably a spinnerbait. Mm, Senko. I'd say definitely spinnerbait. Spinnerbait Senko, them two. Bradley, anyone that donates but is entered. And, and two, I haven't seen you on here before, so I'm going to clear this up. I never asked for donations. It was when we first started these going back months ago. You guys were just donating for whatever reason, which I really do appreciate that. I just put the money back into the channel. But I wanted to give back to the guys that donate. So every week, I just gather some baits up, and we do a little giveaway. So if you donate, you're entered in the giveaway. And at the end of the stream, my wife picks a random comment, and that's the winner. That's how we do it. Yeah, I looked at the Tundra. It's yeah, definitely a good-looking truck. I just like the Ram a little bit better, but the Tundra was definitely on my list. Favorite Guggen Squad bait? The only one I've actually used would be the Squarebill, so I guess I would have to say that one. Um, I did pick up a bunch of their plastics. I even picked up more the other day, ordered some. Haven't tried them yet, but um, as of right now, I guess it'd be the Squarebill because it's the only one I've actually used. 
All right, BT. I'll be looking forward to that email, buddy. You almost got one of those Booyah Spinner Bites. Yeah, I'm liking the looks of them, dude. Especially this redhead one here. So I wanted these in half, and uh, they were sold out. And then I wanted the Spinner Bites in 3 8 and they all had these in half. But yeah, I got some big blades on there. Those should be pretty good. Can't seem to catch anything on a spinner bait. I have no confidence in them. Man, I got a video that I made a while back on just gaining confidence in a lure. And it's hard to do it if you're fishing a place that is tough fishing. But anytime I want to gain confidence in a lure, you know, I always go to the farm ponds where you guys usually see me fish. You know, those are family owned. I mean, good fishing majority of the time. And, you know, you can just catch a bunch of fish there, which will give you confidence in the bait to take to the bigger lakes, you know. If you were going to chuck a 10XD, what kind of rod would you throw that on? Um, it, it's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to vary from manufacturer from one to another. You know, they rate them differently. Um, probably going to need, I mean, I don't even know what those things weigh, a few ounces. I'd imagine you're going to need some sort of heavy power. I would think a mod fast action, but on a rod that long, um, it may even be a faster action, but it still might be softer just because the rod's longer, if that makes sense to you. So what I would do is just look at whatever rod manufacturer that you like and look at the specs on the rods. You just have to make sure that the rod can handle the weight of the bait. But ideally, you would want something with a little bit softer tip, I would think. But again, a rod that long, I mean, you might need an eight-foot rod to throw something like that. You know, if it's a softer rod and a soft tip, it might be, you know, a little bit too limp for your liking. So just keep that in mind. But, you know, some of those longer rods, cranking rods, I've even seen that had a faster action. So, again, I would just look at the specs on the rod and kind of go from there. Josh, I'm looking at getting a Tundra. As a mechanic, I have biased opinions on vehicles. That's cool, dude. Just got my new bass tracker. That's cool, buddy. What's going on, Stefan? How you doing, bud? Did you ever get a... Did you ever get an answer about the crankbaits or something? No, you know what, Will, dude, and I'm getting aggravated about that because I, I hit them up on Facebook. They gave me an email and phone number to call. I called that phone number, to be honest, I called it all last week, and I never got hold of anybody. I, I bet I sat on hold 20 minutes every time I called. I've already followed up with two emails, so I'm getting kind of aggravated now with them. But don't worry, I'll stay on until I get an answer because I told them that a lot of you guys want to know as well. It's it just kind of funny that all the packages say silent, but four are rattling, and one is silent. Should they be silent? Should they be rattling? And it doesn't even say on Tackle Warehouse, so how do you even really know what you're getting? So don't worry. I will get to the bottom of that. As of right now, I don't have an answer, but I'm definitely on it, dude. Don't worry. Junebug Mondo Worm catches Mondos, huh? He's got to give it a dangle, right? Spinner baits work best for me on a cloudy day. Man, it's hard to be a spinner bait. My confidence is not river fishing right now. There we go. Yeah, he would know right there, Richie. I would toss a 10XD on a 7-Eleven TFO mag heavy one to six ounce swim bait rod. There you go, man. That's what you need. Uh, Riley, happy Easter. If you can make a new biospawn bait, what would it be? I'm going to say a frog type bait or like a rage uh, menace type bait. Either one of them. Aaron says heavy for sure with a 5.3 reel. For sure, dude. What's up, TJ? How do you like that boat, bro? Love it, dude. Like I said, I've all been out at once. Haven't even fished off it yet. But I love the boat. Love the size of the boat. I'm digging it, man. What trolling motor would you suggest for an 18 foot aluminum boat? Um, that's a good question, man. I guess it just really depends on you know the size of lake that you're fishing. Are you going to be trolling majority of the lake? Can you use your outboard? Things like that. You know, I had a 55 edge on my tracker, which worked just fine for the lakes that I fished. I would have loved a 24 volt on the one lake where I couldn't fire up my outboard. So on this boat here, for that reason alone. Um, well, it is a bigger boat, so I knew I did want to go with a little bit bigger motor. But for that reason alone, on that one lake where I can't fire up the outboard, I wanted a 24-volt system. It's an 80-pound thrust. 
So I would just take that into consideration where you're going to fish. Can you use your outboard? You know, things like that. But yeah, for years, all I had was that, that 55 edge on the tracker. It worked just fine. What bait were you referring to about the weird rattle? Weird rattle. Weird rattle. Um, I don't know, dude. Weird rattle. I don't know. I don't know. Um, weird rattle. We were talking about chatterbaits earlier. I think me and Matt, Matt were talking about chatterbaits, different noise to the um, Thunder Cricket. Maybe that was that it. Tactical Fisherman. Just got done fishing. How'd you do, man? What's up, brother? Happy Easter. What's going on, Ronnie? How do you, buddy? Happy Easter to you, too, man. Appreciate you checking in. Replacement treble hooks. What brand do you recommend that are sticky? I like Mustad. And I use Mustad. I use Owner, Gamagatsu. I use probably Mustad the most just because I like the WG style hook that they offer. Um, but, I um, mean, hooks these days are all pretty sticky. I mean... I said the Mustads, Gamagatsu's, the owner, what they what they call the ST thirty sixes. I mean, those are awesome as well. I have not tried thirteen fishing soft plastics. I haven't tried those. Have not tried six cents uh, soft plastics either. All my state lakes are closed. Fix the TJ. <laughs> Nothing I can do, buddy. Best color vile bug gotta be black and blue or June bug. Or Bamacraw, one of the three. What happened between me and him? Uh, more or less, I found out that he was kind of talking behind my back a little bit. So, he should have been more focused on building his channel and not so much about, you know. Yeah, it's, it's stupid. I ain't bringing it up. I'm not even giving him any real exposure with me even talking about it. But yeah, his lost there, man. I want to be fishing, but it's way too crowded right now in days. That's kind of what I heard too. I'm kind of worried about how the lakes are going to fish later on when things are back to normal, just because they're, they were pressured before when everyone wasn't off through the week. So now they're getting like even more pressure. So I'm not even sure how these lakes are going to fish this summer. It could be really tough fishing this year. Do bobber stops come in different sizes? I have red and black ones. I have a problem with them sliding up my line. I throw a pound fluoro and advice on how to choose. Uh, as far as I know, you know, I'm trying to think here. For the most part, I don't believe I do. Now, there's a different kind that's called T stops. If you're using something like that, those are two different sizes, but you slide those in the weight to peg them. And those are in two different sizes. I don't think I have. Hang on, do I? Let me look and see what I got right here. Pop open the old battle box. Now these here, these are just your standard bobber stops. I think for the most part, most companies, I think it's just one size. But the T-stops, I use these as well, which I do have a video on these. These do come in two different sizes. So you could be using the wrong size if you're using something like this. But for the most part, like I said, the ones you you may be using these, as far as I know, it's only really one size. I think these could be ones from Excite Baits. I use the ones from Sixth Sense. I use the ones from Bass Pro. And from what I remember, I don't think there's ever really been a size option. Now, I'm not saying there's not on other brands, but all the ones that I've used, I don't recall there being a size option. Recalled them and they didn't answer. Oh, okay. We're talking about Berkeley. Go ahead, though. We're talking about uh, the Berkeley square bill, the, the 5.5s I got here. I don't know if you can even see it here on the phone, but they all say silent. You probably can't see that down there. They all say silent. I wanted rattling, and four of the five rattled, and one was silent. So I didn't really know what was up with that just because the packaging says silent, and there was more rattling than silent, and I would rather have my fifth one rattle as well. So... I've been trying to get a hold of them to figure out what the deal is. And I don't know if they're ignoring me, if they're not in or what. But don't worry. I will keep calling until, <laughs> until I get an answer. Okay. 
Whole Phantom, I don't know what he's doing. Watts, he's busy at work. I think he even had to work today. He uh, works for FedEx. He owns some routes over there, so I think he was even actually delivering today. Phantom, I'm not sure what he's doing. We were supposed to get together last week and fish, but I had to work a few days, and then I was hanging out with my boys, so I didn't have time to hang out with him as well. But as far as I know, he's doing good. Have you checked out the Booyah Cover interactive map? On... No, I have not, dude. I, I didn't even know what that was. Interactive map. That's cool. No, I have not. You didn't catch anything, huh? Better get back out there. Anybody use anything other than the stock bearings that come in reels want a better cast? I'm wondering if they are any bearings. Uh, RJ, I used to use Boca bearings all the time, man. And uh, it's definitely a better bearing that will come stock. But, I mean, I didn't see, I mean, I was putting them in all my reels for a while. But I just didn't see a ton of difference from stock bearings to the Bocos. I mean, you definitely get more distance, for sure. But it's not like you're going to gain 30 yards. You might gain 10, 15, 20 feet max. Now, it is, you're getting the same distance as before with less effort. You know, just because the bearings themselves are just better bearings or smoother and all that. You don't have to oil them. Obviously, a little bit of oil helps protect the bearings, but you don't have to oil them. You can run them dry, less maintenance on them and all that. Um, but Boca bearings are definitely better than stock bearings. I just didn't feel it was enough difference to continue to put them in all my reels. So I haven't done that in a long time. They're definitely nice. But again, I just didn't see the, the benefit to do it in all my reels. Stefan, appreciate five bucks while you're interested in the giveaway. Have you ever used Carolina Keepers? Would they work on different size lines? Um, I'm sure if you go too small, they won't. Um, I've used up, up to 20 pound test on them. They work just fine. They do slip now. I will say they do slip if you got a lot of vegetation on the bottom. So I'll, sometimes I'll use two if I'm dragging and there's a lot of crap on the bottom because one will slip on you if you're in a lot of vegetation. But I probably actually got those. I have them in here too? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't know. No, I don't think I do. Yeah, actually, yeah, I do. See them in there? They're red. Yep. Yeah, so I put them in uh, 20 pound before, no problems. But again, if you go too, too small a diameter, um, it probably won't hold them. But yeah, definitely, if you've got a lot of grass on the bottom, just go with the swivel or just use two of them. But yeah, I love them though. Debo did a change of his bearings on a real ones. Yeah, I got a bunch of those on my on my channel here. I just haven't done it in a while. Tom says bomber stops do come in different sizes. Look on header on the package, but you won't find in the bulk packages. Okay. Yeah, I can't say I've ever seen that on Six Sense or the Excite ones. Bass Pro. Your square bills did the same thing. Uh, the Berkeley ones. Dude, I'm gonna get to the bottom of it, man. Watson Phantom have been. Social distancing. Pipe playing with your Barbies. Michael, appreciate two bucks, buddy. Into the giveaway. I've never seen bobber stops in different sizes, but they are bigger for 85, 100 pound braided lines. Okay. I was fishing a buzz bait because there was fishing jump. Was fishing jump for water bugs. I got you. But no luck, huh? For 1.5 KVDs, must add number twos. It'll handle a two, Sean. I still like a four short shank. But it will handle a two short shank. But it's got to be the short shank, though. So would you just stay stick to stock bearings and clean and maintain regularly? I probably don't clean and maintain as much as I should. Every few months, I mean, I really don't clean the bearings throughout the season. Every few months, I'll just add one drop of oil to the spool bearings. That's all I've been doing over the years, ever since I stopped swapping out the bearings. If you want to swap them, you can. I just didn't, like I said earlier, I didn't see a huge difference with doing that. Not enough to, for me to keep doing it with all my reels. So again, yeah, just a couple drops of oil, one drop of oil, again, per bearing every few months and you'll be good to go. But if you want to spend the money on the Bocas, you know, it's your call. PB largemouth, um, I don't, well, I don't have it on a scale. The biggest that I've had on a scale, I think it's like 6'2". And the biggest that I've caught, though, I know is seven pounder. And uh, maybe if you can find that video, link it down below. I mean, everyone believes it's seven pounder that's watched that video. I, I know it was seven pounder. That's kind of my goal this year, hopefully, to get a seven on the scale. But I would say, yeah, seven pounder is my PB. You should try FX Custom Rods. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that fish. 
Yep. I, I still watch that video all the time, just making sure. I know that was some pounder. I would love to have a big one, though, on scale. Gosh, where's the after room? Seven plus. It's got to be, dude. It was huge, man. It was huge. And there it is right there. There's the PB video. Um, check that one out. It took me two hours to clean and fix my fishing pegboard. I'll be in here for three days straight to get everything cleaned up in here. I mean, it is a mess. I mean, once I start loading the boat, it'll be fine. But since there's nothing really in the boat right now, all the rods, everything's in here. It's like I got to tiptoe around everything all over the floor. So, yeah, once I start loading the boat up, then half of this room will be empty, you know. Well, Tom says, you can find bobber stops down at two pound test, generally two to six pound test, or they group them with two to four pound line differences. Gotcha. Appreciate that, buddy. Very cool. And we are caught up in comments. Hour and 20 minutes in. That's pretty awesome. Still got 133 people on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do that. I really do appreciate that. By the way, how is Miss Tackle Junkie? Babe, let us know how you're doing. What's going on, River Mapper? I thought we were caught up here. We got a few more. If you could be sponsored by a fishing company besides Biospawn, who would it be? Um, it's a good question. Mega Bass, by Mega Bass, Mega Bass or Berkeley maybe. He's a lot of Berkeley stuff. My biggest was 6.5 pounds. I almost lost my mind. I can't imagine what people think when they catch 10, oh, 10 pounder, dude. I wouldn't know what to do either, man. No kidding. Think about buying the Ego Tackle backpack here soon. What's your opinion on the tackle trays that come with? Should I keep them or replace them with others? Great question, Doug. I haven't even loaded it up yet, so I don't have no idea. I don't even know. Let's take a look. Wrong side. Let's take a quick look at them. Something else I need to get done. I need to load up my pound bag. Looks like, uh, there, all these come out. They're all pre-cut dividers all in place, which they all do come out. I mean, it's not a waterproof box. Looks like it has a little tape measure on top there. I mean, I'm sure it's just your standard, it's your standard box, you know. It's like your regular Plano boxes you can get at Walmart and Flambeau, three, four buck box. That's probably what this is. Regular standard box, I mean, for a stock box, I'm sure it's just fine. If you want to upgrade to like a waterproof box, something like that, you know, go ahead. But I'm sure those would handle or hold up for a little while. I don't see a problem, dude. This one here, this bag though, this is the the shorter bag of the two. You can tell that. Then they make one that's that's taller as well. Yeah, I definitely like all the compartments this bag has here. A couple over here. That's where the boxes go. Storage up here. Storage here, here. A couple more in the back. Storage here. I mean, a lot of back, a little, lot of little pockets in there. So I'm digging it, dude. I'm digging it, man. Always hit that thumbs up. That's right. You could fish anywhere in the country. Where would your top destination be? Mmm. Really, anywhere other than Illinois, you know, <laughs> probably uh, got to be somewhere down south. I mean, somewhere some big fish are at. I don't know, maybe Mexico, Lake Fork, um, or else. I don't know, anywhere with some big fish, dude. Somewhere down south. Falcon Lake, Lake Fork, something like that, dude. Like I said, anywhere is better than really anywhere in Illinois. <laughs> Uh, I don't really ever fish a crappie. I catch a crappie from time to time. Usually, 
on spinner baits while I'm bass fishing. But I don't really fish to fish for them too often. Our Laduca out there is Miss Tackle Junkie. She said she's doing well. Appreciate you asking. When are we going to see some fishing videos out of the, from the new boat? Is the water still frozen? No, we're thawed here. Uh, the first time I had the boat out was last week, which you guys would have seen the tour and me breaking the motor in. So depending on how the weather goes this week, I may get her out this week, may wait till next week, but hopefully soon. Like I said, I still don't even have anything um, in the boat yet. Um, is Wu Tungsten good? I've heard a lot of guys use Wu Tungsten, but I've never, I've never used it, so... I'd imagine it's good, but I really don't know. Um, no, I don't do any carp fishing. It's funny, though. On the lake right down the road from me where I, I usually take the boat. Yeah, I just started fishing that lake, and I was throwing, um, it was a 5 8 ounce, 5 8 ounce chopper football jig with a 4.5 inch yum crawl pappy on the back. So a big jig, heavy jig, up shallow, in the grass. And uh, hooked into a fish, man, I thought I had a beast of a bass. You know, lake record. And here it was, a stinking carp. Probably 10-pound carp. And then I was just actually with Miss Tackle Junkie. It was this year. Hey, what did I catch that on? Was it a square bill? We snagged that in the back or something? I caught another huge carp this year as well. I think that was only like 7 or 8 pounds. I guess it was last year. Size so mono do I use normally 12 to 15 pound test? North Florida, what's going on, dude? How you been, buddy? Barack got a 10 1 Pure Illinois back in 2012. No kidding, dude. That's awesome, man. It's funny, the seven pounder I caught is literally two minutes from my house. The Park Lake, that's where I caught my seven pounder. Berkeley is a good sponsor because they have everything. That's kind of my thought. You know, they got hard baits, they got it all. Then I guess striking too. They get everything, but I kind of, I probably like, yeah, I mean, I probably use them both the same, but I do like Berkeley. Will, appreciate five bucks, buddy. You're into the giveaway. Time to put the kids to bed and watch the rest later. Keep up the great work. Love the show. Appreciate it, Will. You the man, buddy. And if, if you end up winning, bud, I'll make sure to leave that down in the comments. I'm sure we'll be getting off here really soon. And we'll have Miss Tackle Junkie pick a winner. What pound braid do you use for soft plastics? Uh, not too often do I use braid with soft plastics. Normally, 15-pound fluorocarbon. I really only use braid for frogs and um, swim jigs, you know, around grass, things like that. Largest I've ever caught was 6'3". Good fish, dude. You need to check out that interactive map on Booyah Cover website. Jason designed it to break down... Which spinner bait to use when? No kidding. I'll check that out. That reminded me of that when I get upstairs. I caught a 9.3 in Cali Delta about five, six years ago. Thought it was once a lifetime fish at the time and still my PB. That's awesome, dude. Nine pounder, man. I don't know what I would do catching a nine pounder. South gets real hot in the summer, but man, I love the heat. I hate cold. I guess I don't mind the cold. I work out in it. I guess it's because I work out in it. I don't want to fish out in it too, you know? So I love the heat. I'll take hundred degrees all year long. Ed caught a 10 pound bass. I don't even know what I, oh, if I caught, I don't even know what I do. PB was just over five pounds and she was a long post spawner in Florida. No kidding. 10 pounder would be the deal, man. Yeah, I'm in Illinois. Loving the talons. I only played with them a little bit when I was out on the water just to make sure everything worked. But yeah, so far, I mean, I actually like the talons more than the power poles. What's the cheapest tungsten to get? I mean, I wouldn't go too cheap on tungsten. You don't want to have any rough edges and things like that on there, you know, and cutting your line. But um, I would still get a decent tungsten, to be honest with you, and just wait for a sale. You know, uh, Tackle Warehouse probably has, um, you know, Strike King and, well, I mean, I guess everything else. Just wait for like a 20% off sale. And get it there. You guys can go to Tackle Freaks. Use my code over there. TJ81, 10% off. Well, I tell you what, Carl's probably has a VMC. They probably got a VMC tungsten. That might be a place to go for you, too. That'd probably be uh, probably one of the cheaper places you can get. If you guys are not a member, head over there. Become a member. Free 30-day trial. Pick up your tungsten. Save some money. And remember, guys, Biospawn right now. If you're a member, Biospawn over there at Carl's, $245 a pack. Non-members, like $350. But if you're a member... Free 30-day trial, 245. Now is the time to stock up 
on some bio spawn. I just stated fishing. I started fishing at Lake Amistad down here in Texas. They have had some Bass Master Classic out here. It's yep, I heard that too, dude. Not James. Both of our lakes, uh, the ramps are still open on the two main lakes that I fish. Still open. Bomber Square, dude, gets her done every time. Got to go have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your Easter. You too, Jim. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, I don't know if we're making steaks anymore, man, but I do appreciate it. Hey, y'all, I may or may not know the locations of someone's fishing holes. Keep it quiet, dude. Keep it quiet, man. 100 degree all year long. Come to Florida. Water's 80 already. Dude, I'm serious, man. I'll take it, dude. I love the heat, man. I'm Italian. I don't burn. I'm good. I'll take it. White whale, happy Easter, buddy. Steven said, my 10-year-old caught a seven-pound post-spawn largemouth yesterday on a jig. That's awesome, dude. Post-spawn, so what? That's probably, what, eight-pound or so? I don't have a code for Tackle Warehouse. I have a code for Tackle Freaks. It says TJ81, 10% off. Florida's okay, but Texas is great. And all the discs, all the discount codes that I have for all the companies that I'm partnered with, they're all down below. So a lot of those companies I'm not even actually partnered with. They're just if I'm using the products, I say, hey, I'm using your stuff, man. Can you guys hook up my followers with a discount? And it's because I'm using the stuff. So it's kind of how those codes work. The guy has been an hour and a half. Still got 135 people on here, which is awesome. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, definitely do so. I think we're about to ready to call it a night. Babe, if you can pick the Super Chat winner, that would be awesome. Post it down below. Post the winner, and we'll go ahead and call it a night. I know you wouldn't, Aaron. I got to get you on those likes this year, dude. Where are all the tackle junkies today? We still got 126 people on here. Not bad for today. I didn't think half you guys would even get on here with being Easter. All the ramps are closed in Florida. Here in Georgia, we are already post spawners too. No kidding. No problem, Matt, dude. Appreciate you, buddy. Sundays won't be nothing without you guys, you know. Good luck this week, dude, if you go fishing. Hope you can dodge that snow. Be well, keep you, the family safe, and these crazy times. You too, buddy. You too, man. Be safe. It's kind of why I said I kind of feel bad about even going out. I'd hate to go out fishing and talk to some guy at the ramp that possibly has something, and then I bring it home to the family just because my wife's got asthma and all that. So I'm trying to stay home as much as I can. You know what? I don't even think we were on last week. I think I passed last week. I was going to do it on Thursday, and then I just forgot about it, to be honest. So really didn't miss nothing. My river is disgusting, but I have 10 pound pounder in it, carp, catfish, bass, massive bluegill, and there you go, dude. Big muskie. Man, I love to catch muskie. Bad storms. Any rod socks better than others? I mean, I use the Calcos ones. Um, they seem to have a little bit tighter weave than let's say the rod glove, but rod glove works just as, just as good to me. Um, I've seen the Bass Pro ones. I, I don't believe their weave is as tight and the eyes do pop out with those. But again, I've only really used, um, like I said, the Bass Pro ones, the rod glove and the Calcos. So I would stick with either the Calcos or the, the rod glove. So you guys want some Calcos ones, you guys can use my code down below. TJ81, I do believe it's 15% off, but, um, yeah, those two brands are pretty good. I hear you, White Whale. Always awesome to finish the day with some fishing talk. For sure, Doug. Appreciate you, buddy. We got tornadoes outside the house. No kidding. Be safe, man. Favorite bait, man. Gotta be the square bill. And James uh, Trevino. I'm going to say your name wrong. You are tonight's lucky winner. So you need to email me your shipping info, which my email is in the description. Or you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. Is he on here? 
I've tried, uh, Jim says, I've tried almost all the rod covers and TRC covers are definitely my favorite. Well, Baskey, I can believe he uses the TRC covers as well. All right, he's on here. Cool. James, there you are, dude. Hit me up, buddy. Email in the description or message me on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll get you shipped out hopefully tomorrow. Have you ever considered taking bass trip to Canada, especially Ontario? Yeah, my old editor, he lives in, uh, in Canada, and he was trying to talk me into that for years. And if I had more time off, I mean, I would definitely have gone up there. Uh, I mean, if we can ever get this channel full time, I mean, I'm going to travel all over. But until we do that, I'm kind of stuck where I'm, I'm kind of stuck fishing these crappy lakes at the moment. A lot of these, most YouTubers, you know, are, or not, I can say most of them, but a lot of YouTubers are full time, you know, a lot of the bigger channels and they can travel wherever and fish where I'm still trying to juggle this. And heck, this takes more hours than a full-time job, plus I'm doing my full-time job. So, yeah, I don't just have a whole lot of time to travel at the moment. But eventually, I'll get there, dude. Thinking about pin to conflict. 3,000, that is right choice for what? Okay. Not sure what you mean there. What is a good line for Ned Rig Fishing? I use six pound test um, fluorocarbon, and a lot of guys use four. The round cover you may want to use a little bit heavier. I say anywhere between probably four to eight pound range would be good. And I use six. Yeah, I see Tiger King. I actually think a new episode, they, they just put a new episode on there. I thought definitely a weird show. Some guys are whacked. I'd like to make it your way this summer. Dude, that would be cool, dude. Yeah, I won't be a few hours away, man. We should be able to make that happen or maybe meet in the middle or something, dude. We'll see how it goes down. But well, guys, hour and 36 minutes. We're going to get off here. Hopefully, the wife's got the steaks going upstairs. I doubt it, but it would be nice. We got a little hungry right now. But yeah, you guys are awesome, man. I really appreciate you guys tuning in for the Sunday Night Chats. It was a pleasure. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. I do have a video for you guys this Tuesday and Thursday, so keep a lookout for those. And then we'll see you live next Sunday. Be safe, everyone. You guys are awesome. Happy Easter.